is the 216th day of Ukrainian resistance at this Ukraine Media Center. And we start our special event, a panel discussion on energy sustainability during the war and after the victory. Here I would also would like to mention that this event is supported by the Environmental Policy and Advocacy Initiative for Ukraine of the International Renaissance Foundation, which is implemented with the financial support of Sweden. So here with us today to talk about energy sustainability and our security, we have a panel of experts, Svetoslav Pavluk, Executive Director at Association Energy Efficient Cities of Ukraine. We also have Alexey Pasuk with us, Deputy Director at uh, Ecogia NGO, and Natalia Holodova, expert at EcoClub NGO, who is responsible for the coordination of the information campaign aimed at preparing the Ukrainians for the winter season. Yes, we will talk about this more. And we also have Andrei Martinuk, Executive Director at EcoClub NGO. Yes, I have introduced everyone. So these are the rules. You can answer the question in any order. We have mics here. If there is someone from the audience who would like to ask a question, let us know, raise your hand and just attract my attention. Well, the first question that I would like to ask is a very simple one. So how do we make through this winter? How is it going to impact our energy sector right now? And how is it going to impact the energy sector long term? It is a very simple question. So I will start with very simple answers. What do people have to do? Because unfortunately, people do not really know a lot what to do in crisis situation, what to do in the season when the heating has not been turned on yet or when it is on, what to do in case uh, they don't have access to all of these uh, supplies. And here we have different recommendations and globally you can divide them into different parts. So for those people who live in apartment buildings, in apartments, it's important actually to take all the measures uh, to actually reduce the loss of heat plastic windows to adjust them to have different screens which could save um, energy if we have many apartments it's important that there are no halls that we do not have any outlets for the losses of energy another important thing is to talk to the utility company and to ask them to check all the grids to make sure that there are no issues, that they're not too old, to there are some problems, it's important to fix them. It is of importance because in case we have no heating for some period of time, we will have to use uh, different electric devices which will provide heat, and it's important not to have any problems with the grid. Also, it is important to check the grid in the entire building and also to choose one room where you will have the heating on, you not to have heating in all of the rooms. If the situation gets really bad, then you choose one apartment and there will be heating in only one apartment, but this is something to be negotiated with neighbors. Also, it makes sense to talk to your neighbors and to have a certain schedule of healing, of heating, sorry. So it's not that at eight o'clock everyone comes back home and everyone's uh, devices is, are on, because it's important in terms of the load on the grid. This is to start with. Then it's important to make sure that there is a long hose in the utility company because sometimes you will have to remove the water and to make sure that this water goes out outside it is something which is trivial but it could be of help and if it is a lengthy period when we do not have a central heating system functioning then it means that you cannot really stay there for a long period of time it means that you will have to move to your friends to your parents in rural areas but you will have to move actually out because if there is no heating for a long period of time, uh, the building is going to freeze. It means that you will not be able to use to use uh, water. And what about candles? Can we use candles and other devices? It's better to go to someone who is in a village because if you use some heaters, actually, there are some risks. And sometimes, actually, it is about some exhaust fumes. And yes, we talked to about people but what about the rest because 
we know that the the, the country will the state will take some measures some critical measures and it means that we will have not really a strategic approach from the future perspective but we will work on our energy sector in terms of its its uh, detection of those problems and how is it going to affect the structure of our energy security and what about a long-term perspective because we are thinking about some plans but maybe even at this point they can go wrong I think it's important that we divide this question about this winter, the upcoming winter. It is a very special one. And the key answer would be that it depends, actually. It hinges on Russia's actions. These, when we talk about these outcomes for the energy sector, well, Hypothetically, I don't really have this information coming from very important governmental sources, but I think that there is some understanding that um, in these territories which are under control of Ukraine, I think that we will handle the situation this winter, but we live during the war and at any moment some part of infrastructure could be destroyed. We don't know which exactly. We already so we can actually have some understanding because sometimes we have military assignments and some parts of these the structures could be destroyed as part of the plan but sometimes we know that uh, these objects are being attacked uh, to to wreak chaos and it's not really clear what is the importance in terms of the military actions if you talk about a big cities such as Kiti, Kiev, then there is a likelihood of the entire system going down but it could be that it is only part of it one of the power stations what about blackout is it it is impossible in Kiev? it is possible but doesn't mean that it is going to happen necessarily. We also have to realize that Ukraine and Ukrainian specialists, they, we are in the state of war for quite a period of time already, and we already have some experience how to fix these problems uh, quickly. I would be thinking more about uh, towns, about some towns or small cities close to the contact lines. And the key idea is if something goes wrong, it's important to be evacuated. And I think it's better to get evacuated, get evacuated uh, sooner than better without expecting that the infrastructure will not make. And these are some theoretical scenarios. And I think that uh, the government knows more about it. But for the majority, the answer is to think what is the place that you would go to if the heating is not working? So it is one thing when we talk about heating this is something, yes, if you have electricity, but if there is no power for a long period of time, this is already the problem for the entire infrastructure for heating, for water supplies, uh, because, uh, well, gas, use, the use of gas, that is also going to impact all of these parts. Well, that's that's what it is. Okay. Probably I would like to clarify. So Natalia has mentioned about diversification of risk for uh, people, but we also understand that the state should diversify its risks. How is it going to look, this energy diversified uh, sustainability? I will continue about people and about the environment because uh, I'm an environmentalist, we have a possibility to take a look at what was happening in those countries which uh, several decades ago, who, which were also in the state of war, Armenia, Georgia, Azerbaijan, to some extent. The 
because logging was massive there in, in order actually to make it through winter. And this is not exactly what we would like to see in Ukraine. We see that, well, logs uh, are getting more expensive. Well, I understand that part of this uh, resource goes to the army. When we talk about wood resources, well, we know that the prices, they went up because of the gas prices. And uh, also there are four regions involved uh, in this. Well, we could see actually those train cars and we could see already this wood there. Well, this is just some reflections of mine, but it would be very important for us to preser preserve these parts of forest which are part of our diversity. These are different types, different categories of forests, especially those which are under threat, where often they are in private ownership. This is something to add to the situation. So I don't really have one and clear answer to this question. It's more about me trying to think about uh, the experience of Armenia and Georgia in particular and actually just think about all these different devices which are being used I, and to stop using uh, some of them such as pot belly stoves and if we talk about the information on the governmental level very often we don't have access to this uh, information I think that the European integration is going to save us to some extent because we have this connection with the grid. I know that it works one way, but I'm not sure if it works in an in a in an opposite way. So maybe Svetoslav knows more about this. So, so probably I will take the floor. It's not really going to help us a lot. Theoretically, it could help us, but when we talk about this cable, it does it will not give us. Uh, this capacity which we need, and even it was bigger than the cost for energy is eight, uh, ten times higher than with us. So even if we take the resources from there as some emergency aid, because sometimes this is what happens, it works both ways, we do that uh, and we receive it in return. But who's going to pay for this difference? Because for us, we have uh, 162 hryvnias for the public and then we know that in Europe it's much higher and we don't really have this reserved for financial for financial reasons and our generation uh, decreased 30 percent and we can talk about uh, our nuclear power station the biggest one and heat power stations is being compensated also uh, by um, decreased consumption as far as industry is concerned. But as compared to the previous year, we can really see um, this decrease. And we know that it's not really a good thing because it's about jobs, it's about taxes being paid. So when we will have our industry recovering, we will have a deficit of, uh, of um, energy. And on the other hand, we have this situation and for over a couple of years already, when we have photovoltaic um, stations at some industry facilities, it gives them power, which was the same price or even cheaper. So there will be this trend uh, to have autonomous uh, solar power plants, and this is going to be a trend because those communities which are interested in energy efficiency those which invested in better technologies they have a more reasonable approach because the volume of uh, energy resources or well generally fuel which they need is um, smaller but there are different communities in some communities we have a system of centralized uh, 
energy supplies, but for some communities they have a system of an individual heating and sometimes city or the town cannot really help with that. Well, they could help partially, but generally if you talk about the situation, there isn't much you can do. If it is a centralized uh, system, then you can use different uh, boilers, was to use solid waste, uh, then you can use some additional technologies. There is an entire set of options available to make sure that there is sustainability, but if it is individual, it will be difficult to, to help you, especially if you talk about a uh, gas deficit, you cannot use reserves here. On the whole, I think that we have an deficit of energy because we know that the government encouraged uh, NAFTA has for us to have 19 billion cubic meters of gas. This is what we don't have. We have some 13. If you talk about our balance, we understand that some cities will not be part of this system, but it is of no significant help to us because on the one hand, we have very many IDPs uh, who live in different shelters and some other places, and that will mean that they will need to have more resources than these are cities which pay for that, but cities do not have funding for uh, this. And on the other hand, we say that we have we have some guarantees for people, but I think that sometimes people will just go to um, the kitchen, put a brick on the stove. If they don't really have a gas meter, they will just use gather. If you do not have gas meters, if you do not have this price which really makes people suffer, well, this is a vicious circle because we are not investing in energy efficiency because we don't have funding, we don't have funds, because we use the, we use the money for inefficient consumption that we have if it's about lower gas prices it's just us moving in circles so what is the way out well i think if you start thinking about uh, heating two months before the season starts i think in long term long term it's about investment into energy efficiency but what about funding who gives us money well no one will because Last year, we basically killed the program for warm loans, about the only source as the individual sector, then Energy Efficiency Foundation, well, funding, well, we don't really have an other budget, any funds for energy efficiency, then you have 30% uh, bank rates, and um, they refuse to give it to condominiums and i think that only it's only in 15 percent that we actually have the system because it is also about an individual sector so it's, it's going to be not easy well we will find the way out i guess but um well the more we delay this question about radical modernization of accommodation and housing and consumption the more difficult situation gets because if you have a lot of consumption, we have high prices, then there is no good solution to this. But if you do not deal, we don't want to work uh, on energy efficiency, even in times of war, this is not a way out. It's important to invest into lower levels of consumption. But the way we work right now, I think that. Each year we say that it's important for us to make it to March. Then when March comes, then we have another six months. But we have energy efficiency fund. fund. Well, but it's not working, this energy efficiency fund. Because it requires loaning, long and cheap loans. Because we know that the money costs a lot. It's also about experts. It's about quick procedures. We don't have experts, we don't have these procedures. The money is an issue and we don't have any funding for this uh, energy efficiency uh, fund. And in the way in which it exists right now, it helps only those uh, apartment buildings with condominiums and 
in those uh, buildings, apartment complexes where they we don't have condominium, condominiums, uh, they cannot actually have the support. So we have a problem when we talk about energy efficiency fund. It compensates part of the loan or the money invested that people take out from bank, but this is not what is happening right now. So we have some product which is not being multiplied. We don't have loans from banks, so there is no compensation. And generally, if you talk about return of investment, it's questionable. So what about wood? When you talk about green energy and the environment, what is the role of this when we talk about survival? Because we know when we talk about green energy and our attitude towards something which is low long term which is about investment and expensive so i think the temptation is uh, actually to use the uh, trees especially in that situation when we don't really have any good sources of investment i think that Svetoslav has already uh, touched um, upon it the cost of renewable sources of energy it equals or it is even lower when you talk about ex these extreme conditions of the cost of energy efficiency sources, which are known as traditional uh, gas prices and prices for many other energy resources, they have soared, but they also need investment. Well, everything does. But here, I also would like to note that renewable energy uh, sources uh, go in line with energy efficiency. We have actually to lower our consumption in Rivne a director and operator of central heating on TV, he makes a statement that we have 30% loss of, of ga gas, well, which is not being consumed. The, the, we just have heating for those uh, lanes with green grass and our cats uh, sitting on warm pipes. So this is inefficient regulation. And in Summer, we have three, four percent loss. So there is a huge potential. This is just something which has to be done. We don't really have a way out. We actually have to stop uh, consuming. We have uh, the crisis already here. We are entering. We are entering the EU when we talk about the consumption of gas and um, coal. This is yes, but you know that. Uh, the, the, the state the people, they will have this question. And as Pavka Kruchahin actually, you know, to, to bring everything from Boyarka to make sure that people in Kyiv are warm. So, what do we do now? And how is it going to affect us long term? Because we can have the system of energy sector in one way, but it will be difficult for us to change it later. But you see, we are not trying to change the energy sector. Right now, we are not working on new capacities. Well, before the winter, what has to be done is that there could be a situation when people will start using um, electricity as a resource. And this is the problem for the, for the grid, even when we're talking about uh, apartment buildings. But are people aware of the fact that this air conditioning system, which provides he heat, it is also about um, the heat system. You really need to understand the specifications. So if it is uh, up to minus five, it's about heating. And it's more energy efficient if you use AC as compared to those traditional uh, sources. It's not really about uh, new capacities when we talk about upcoming winter. And when we talk about renewable or non-renewable sources, I think that there is this uh, information which we still have, but it is not. Uh, it is no longer true. If you take a look uh, at the past decade about this new 
capacity is being introduced. Well, mostly we're talking about renewable energy. Yes, but we lost some of these possibilities. Yes, we did. If you take a look at uh, modern trends, if someone is investing into new uh, capacities, it is about renewable energy. And it's not only about uh, prices, it is also about a loan system. Who's ready these days to finance uh, well traditional uh, energy? It's difficult to find uh, money because, of course, that we expect some international uh, aid as far as uh, loans are concerned. We can talk about these things, but the situation is as follows. It's either we keep funding uh, the infrastructure, which is already present and it's the uh, operability, but if you build something new and if it is with the involvement of business, then we focus on renewable energy because globally this market has already changed. What about mines? Well, we have them in Chernobyl. Do you think that we have to close them? What about nuclear power? Do we develop it? Do, do, there is this responsibility, commitment on the level of the state that we have to close these uh, mines uh, by 2035. So this is going to happen because uh, it, this is something which will happen because of the depletion of wealth or the price for those products which uh, work on coal. There will be very high taxation because of CO2 emissions and this energy generated from coal. It could be a reserve source, but there is the situation that we have right now when these energy resources is also about their presence or a absence. This is a different format. It's not only about money. This is exactly why I'm asking about mines. We know that coal is a dirt is dirty fuel, especially Ukrainian coal. And uh, we know that uh, characteristics uh, are not really good. It's not a, a, about CO2 only. And we know that it has a lot of uh, sulfur in it. That is why when we talk about the fate of Ukrainian um, coal, Ukrainian coal is it's not a good one. So it's more about this new roles of different energy resources, so solar panels, biomass um, plants. Um, different generating facilities in Kamenets Budiski in Zhovka, they have boiler system and they function on local uh, fuel. Here I would like probably to, to talk about different things separately. We talk about emergency situation, we talk about the planning. I think, okay, sometimes we combine them, but it's better not to. But we talk about this emergency reaction when you play chess and there could be a different positioning, it could actually define how you're going to move in the upcoming five, six uh, years. These urgent measures, they could result in different uh, strategy planning and different measures, well, possibly. Well, the motivation right now is security. It's not about uh, money, the prices which we have for gas or um power it's not about it's it's about political aspect it's not about an economic one so the worst thing is the situation is that these prices they are killing um, economy in terms of renewable sources of energy when we talk about well pellets and we know that this is condensed wood basically which could be used for heating the information which we receive from uh, pallet manufacturers uh, from western parts of Ukraine, 90% of it is being exported. It's not being used here. But why? Because the owner of this fuel who have to pay, well, they don't receive it for free. It's about market uh, prices. It's also about their revenue. It's about, it's about the price of, of wood. And of course that they will sell to the European market because they will get more. 
So the situation is that the energy which we receive from pellets is cheaper than the energy which we receive from gas. Well, at least this is the way it works in Luciania, and Luciania has made a lot of progress um, in this respect. So when we subsidize actually gas, it means that we have more pallets, our local pallets, on the European market. And okay, some people will make money out of it, but at the same time, we have subsidies for the energy of the European Union by our state dotations, because uh, we make our pallets, uh, they are not competitive on our market. When we talk about megawatt per hour, it's going to be more expensive than what can be generated from gas. And you can sell it there, but you can sell it here. That is why we have this cheap gas and we push away pallets from our market. But what about these prices? What do you think? Are they comparable when we talk about Ukraine and European prices? Well, no, we, we will not do well here, but you know, it's been this story is if an old one. We hear about these things for 10 years or so, but we didn't have the war. Well, yes, this is true. But again, the first thing is when we don't really have security and if we have lower prices, in, if you can invest in Algiers and uh, develop gas there, then investment will go there because it is 2000 it's not $200 and there is no war there. They are not being attacked by missiles. The security situation is different. So I think it's a data situation for us, and I don't see a solution there. I mean, there is a bad solution, a very bad solution. And when we talk about these bad solutions, it's important for us to stimulate this individual sector. I mentioned this, that 6 billion of gas, or at least when we talk about the previous year, were used in centralized heating system in cities, and almost 9 billion, or some 8 billion, were used by individual households for heating and for cooking purposes. And if on the level of state regulation, we can actually lower the temperature and to save money this way, when we talk about these six billion for centralized system, then when people have individual system, because I ask the people I know in view and I ask the people, uh, have you already turned it on? Yeah, it was cold outside, you know, some four, six degrees. Yes, the, the heating was on. We do not really stimulate an individual sector. They have unlimited access to cheap gas. It is not regulated when we talk about uh, the number of cubic meters uh, which come at a lower price. There is no, uh, there are no regulatory practices uh, as to the fact that you cannot use it in September and October. And people use it because you know, well, well seven to hundred. This is what you pay. So people don't worry about that. So what about this vendor? What do you think still? Do we close the mines or we don't? But I actually wanted to uh, continue the topic of subsidies and gas and then we can talk more about mines. Yes, there is another problem because when we talk about people who use uh, individual heating devices, gas is very cheap. Well, the price paid by the owners of uh, individual system, well, it differs significantly. And this is a minus for a drawback for a central heating system because in terms of climate change and a modern system and our needs when I talk about um, decreasing emissions but people they opt for individual heating because if they buy a new apartment they, this is what they do in most new apartments uh, most new apartments in Rimna they have an individual heating system and if you check Google, for very many requests have to transition to this individual heating system. But actually, when you move and you shift to this system, actually, we become more dependent on gas and there are no other alternative for us apart from gas. This is just one thing that I wanted to mention and I'll pass it over to you. And in fact, uh, subsidies for gas for population, it, well, it has the right to exist, but it's more about the people who can physically receive such, uh, such financial help and they can actually invest. But those people who can pay, who can afford it, they have to pay real prices because these subsidies, they just postpone energy efficiency related measures. What I wanted to say, the European Union in response to this gas blackmail they have Repower EU program 
And there, they clearly describe what are the measures to be taken to actually do without Russian gas. And one of them is actually a ban on installation of uh, private, uh, on these uh, individual boilers. So they will stay where, where they are, but you cannot install a new one. At the same time, well, I'm in Van Frankisk now. The municipality there urges, or what, what is people are being encouraged to use an individual system of heating just for us in five years to understand that it was a mistake because we will have to again face this problem of us refusing from the use of it it's about this idea of the heat pumps and ac systems uh, which could also be used for um, heating i think that yeah we really need to assess the situation and on the grounds of that to take some decisions about the motivation and individual heating important to understand the motivation of people why do they do that why they want what do they want to have an individual heating system if we say that well this is one thing when people want something and it is another thing that pe what people need because people want to have some control over heating and they want to pay lower prices yes they want to pay less but they also want to control it to regulate it sometimes you know in july they would want to have sahara there you know very hot temperature and they can control it they can regulate it but an individual system is not only it's not the only option to have to do that it is also about a high quality centralized system because we try to compare you know the system which was there in the 40s of centralized heating but we have these uh, condensation um boilers which are very modern it's like mercedes and a, a motorbike that you try to compare if you talk about highly efficient uh, systems with individual boilers, your apartments here, I can actually draw and I can provide very clear examples. A centralized system is going to be more efficient and uh, and more affordable. But personally, it surprises me because for years I was convinced and that that it's bad to actually to use an individual system rather than a centralized one. I can explain why it happens so. It happens so. So this was the beginning of 2000, and I think it was uh, till uh, 2011. The the price for gas was very different when I talk about individual and centralized system. That is why there were some very strange price segment but this is the assumptions yes but the assumption comes from from experience and if you take a heat visor and you can see this it's clear it's easy to see it in the city center in Lviv especially talk about these old buildings there are some individual well stoves or some gas systems and out of four or five apartments, we have one and um, no one is there. There is no heating and there is one apartment which has to pay for all of them. And you can actually trace it easily. When we have this combined system in um, high-rise buildings, then we know that pipes, they provide heating to apartments was an individual heating and they say that well that this is the way it should be but in fact people who use a centralized system they have to pay additionally it's, it's about physics here it's not about like speculation or something these are numbers um, you can actually show it and it's important to explain these things to people because it's important for people to see it people believe with their eyes my uh, mother-in-law lives um, at Doroshenka Street and she has problems with her ceiling and there was this teacher who used to live there and she had an electric heater only in one room and uh, it's impossible with this um, area to heat it because if there are no neighbors surrounding here because sometimes you know people they don't want to have heating or they live in a summer house and you pay for everyone 
we have high rise uh, buildings when we have both individual and uh, centralized system. Usually, a centralized system has to compensate actually for individual uh, systems of heating, and that is why we have this myth that it is so cheap to have an individual system. And in all um, rich countries, we have this centralized system of heating being developed. But you were very, you know, courageous to include us. Yes, but what I'm trying to say is that mostly it's about uh, climate change um, topic. And one of the easy solutions which we could use in our apartments have to make it uh, this uh, winter. Very many Ukrainians, they have water uh, heating boilers. And I look through statistics, 8% of uh, power, 8, 10%, there are different um, estimates, which is being consumed by household, is about these boilers. And they usually use uh, electricity in times of uh, peak load for uh, the grid. So if we turn off a boiler before 11 in the evening or we have a more advanced decision and there's a special thingy which you can use, there's a timer that you can use uh, at your socket. Well, it costs 120 hryvnias. It will actually increase the reliability, that is why uh, the chances of blackouts, this is a very simple method, but if all Ukrainians apply it, 8% of energy when talking about households, it is a big number. Thank you. But we are not Europe. We talk about rich countries, European countries, about their directives and this transition of becoming less dependent on Russia. If you were a prime minister, what would be three, four steps that you would take? I mean, each of you to make sure that we have energy sustainability this winter in Ukraine and further on. Well, well, there was this question about the energy sources. And I think that one of the things that the prime minister has to do is to show how the country will build its energy sector because it is a signal for investors. They have to understand what they can invest in because this is not... But you know, after the green tariff, many investors understood the situation in a different way. Well, yes, the green tariff was a very good example, not because it was... Because I think that this is the way you think that it was... That it was... Uh, a very corruptive scheme because I think that a green tariff was an example where we had the good policy when we managed to have investment in the country where it is generally difficult to invest and here we talk about new technologies to increase the number of renewable energy through this green tariff. Well, we don't really have green tariffs for new. It, it, it's already in the history, but the worst thing what was done was that this the green tariff was revoked um, at a very particular time, and there were some promises, uh, and they understood that they were not to be trusted. So those which, who invested into this new generation, uh, there are court cases with the state because uh, it's about our liabilities. I think that would be the first step for the prime minister not to have the situation when with your actions you try to show that this is not the place, a good place for investment. And uh, secondly, it is about uh, the, the policy. It's important to show that it makes sense to invest in this market, the international market, it's not only about the green sector and another thing that the cabinet of minister can do and this is what they've been doing they already have some plans for uh, construction of new nuclear um, power plants and investors from other sectors 
they understand that this is the priority probably if something goes wrong then well renewable energy is not going to be a problem but the reality is to build new reactors well ukraine will not be capable of doing that but first of all because we don't really have any of them constructed and then we don't have financing and the only country with expert um, practices that was fresh actually but i think that yeah there were some dozens of stations in bangladesh in turkey but yes if there is statistics about um, commencing operation of these uh, power plants um, around the world then i think that we have one uh, gigawatt around the no i think at least a dozens and hundreds no well, China, they are building, no, just a couple of years ago, they built something, well, but Poland has uh, commissioned, uh, no, this is not true. Okay, let's, let's not argue about this. But is it important for us to develop nuclear power? Yeah, but we cannot do that because there is no one to, to build it. Yes, but we talk about investors from the outside. Does it make a difference who is investing? Well, we can take a look at all of them. Yes, let's analyze. Uh, the US, yes. Starting with the 70s, there were no others because it was um, not cheap, it was complicated. And then the state supported them. They it said that send a signal, yes, we want it. Then uh, there were four reactors to be built. They built two reactors and then they went bankrupt. Bathsheba, which belonged to Western House, uh, it had to sell their, 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 their shares and EDF in France. They're also entering the winter season and very many plants, they don't work because there were some cracks uh, detected and there was also a situation where they had to fix it. So this is when we talk about Europe. So there was a, com and, uh, they commissioned in, from Finland and uh, it has to be it had to be finished and they are 10 years uh, behind it means that uh, they need to invest more than Johnson in Great Britain he said well that it's important for us to have new capacities and let's have something together with the French uh, let's build something but the French said that again th that was a state campaign it was supported by state and the French said that no it's okay that we already paid uh, Finland, that they had this brilliant contract, that it didn't depend on the cost, actually. That was the responsibility of, uh, of, of the French. And we know that Russia is subsidized, but we know that sometimes when people want something, they can overcome many challenges, and then if we have this request for nuclear power, I'm an environmentalist, uh, and uh, in the senior park, uh, I was just dragging tires um, and uh, emissions uh, along the Nister River. And I'm a supporter of the fact that as of today, nuclear power stations are a means of generation of energy with uh, the lowest level of CO2. Um, Trace. That is why uh, footprint. That is why I cannot really see what is any other way for us uh, to become uh, neutral other than developing uh, nuclear power. And there are different technologies. We have French technologies which differ from Soviet technologies. They're more about uh, special maneuvers, and this uh, this maneuvering at seven at eight in the evening people turn on cattles and many other devices we have these peaks of consumption our power plants yes they cannot really regulate quickly this uh, capacity and it should take not hours but but several minutes and in france they know how to do it. well i'm sorry but I, I wasn't interrupting you so it's more about our coal uh, plants hydro plants and hydroaccumulating 
power plants, but as we can see it from practice, our neighbor Poland, they commissioned it from the US. I don't really remember the, the name of the company. I think that there are three of them, at least this is what I remember. Ukraine uh, signed three different memoranda on cooperation with three companies, I mean, with the, the Americans. And I think it was in Khmelnytsky or in some other places, or maybe it was about uh, southern, uh, southern part of Ukraine. I just want to remind you that our reactors, they have to be out of operation by 2035, and that would take us 5 billion for one reactor. But I mean, that was the price before uh, the crisis, 5 billion dollars, about 5, 6 billion dollars for one reactor. So the biggest uh, problem is uh, funding. Are we, first of all, capable to stop uh, the operation of these reactors and then to have new reactors uh, installed? And do, if you have this need, are we capable of uh, uh, funding uh, such construction? And in this situation, well, before the war, up till now, uh, I mean, before February, we had this division of nuclear and non nuclear generation, some 55, 40 percent, percent so it was a domineering one, and we don't really have alternatives for quick replacement. When we talk about uh, well, research and and project uh, documentation, design documentation, it is a long-term process. It takes years to start it. So we take some decisions, it's important for us uh, to act now, to start with planning and materials and, and money and all of that. Yes, this is exactly why I asked about this role model. Let's imagine that we are Mr. Schmihal or well, the Prime Minister, so what do we do? What are those three steps to take? Well, probably you'd like to, to finish, because I don't know if it is my turn to answer. I would request all the cities to have municipal energy uh, plans because if there is a municipal energy plan gives an understanding what the situation is and what should happen, what are the structure of energy consumption today and what should happen in 10, 20, 30 years. If you have the funding by the state or we have some loan programs it should go in line with these uh, municipal energy plans. That is why to have any energy uh, plans uh, which are not part of the system, this is just a waste of money. Another thing is when we have some emergency uh, systems, they have to be of high quality. Japanese uh, container, uh, heat uh, um, pumps, and uh, well, but any construction is. Uh, a lengthy period, at least one or two years, it's, it's longer than the, the time that we have, those two months before a heating season kicks in. So I'm, if you ask about logging, yes, it, it, it will be there. I do think that we will have this railway. No, I'm, this is just a reference to Kerchahin and Boyerka. You know, I saw that I was an, an old person you know, an ancient one, but I don't really remember about Pavka Krachahin and what he was doing. I, I remember that there was a person like that, but I don't truly really know. I think that a younger generation, they don't even know the name of uh, the, the person. So I think it's, it's better for us to stop mentioning these names because there are no associations. It's because I'm from Cave, you know, so you can forgive me for mentioning. And just a quick word about nuclear uh, energy. There was no attempt, an official attempt, to to make um, estimates. And this is a very conspicuous uh, fact, because I was working with different agencies and we tried to bring it up many times. There was no attempt to... Are you talking about exploitation? No, I'm talking about this general estimate. The energy of the... Uh, the analysis of the energy cycle. We don't really have any projects for closing down, but we have uh, Chernobyl, and it is not in operation, but well, uh, then in Nerhodar, I think that 
We will also have some experience talking about security. Nakhodar is a great illustration. And to answer your question, what would I do if I was a prime minister? I would stop actually having these paternalistic practices that was Ukrainians. U the Ukrainians, with this word, they have proved that they can take responsibility for the current situation. And Natalia has mentioned uh, the preparation for winter, but these, this, this way of communication with the government is sufficient. I think that in Berlin, well, local authorities, they, they explain it to people. They don't really have a threat of blackouts. And I think that the communication is lacking here, so maybe I mean this, I um, don't you know, information bubble, and I do not really receive this information coming from the uh, government. But I think that this is this paternalism when, in my interpretation, the government does not want people to be panicky, but it, at the same time, it uh, does not tell the truth to the people. It's important that we do that. And uh, we were talking a lot about renewable energy sources. We have a great need to increase the energy efficiency of uh, households. And I counted uh, this mean cost when we talk about those buildings uh, with energy efficiency fund. Then we know that the consumption was 40% less when we talk about insulation of walls and some complex uh, decisions without recuperation, without uh, heat um, pumps. This when you have a little mineral wool and actually it decreases uh, the need for energy by 40%. And we have 50% gap in our budget. It's not really about the budget, it's about some conditions. Um, which will result in energy efficiency. I'm talking about market prices for energy. Without market prices, we will not have any return on investment. This is not a good way of having a discussion because it's better to to be rich and it's like it's better to be rich uh, and healthy or poor and sick. But you know, well, we are sick and we are in the state of war. So this part of state regulation and paternalism, it will remain. And to my mind, uh, energy prices, when I talk about different markets, markets, I think that they're not really realistic, they're exorbitant. And it's also about speculators who are playing on this market. And I think that uh, the response has to come from the EU. But the key uh, thing here is uh, the the offer, yes, the, the supply, because this is what we can see in the European um, market, 90% reserves, and we know that it's like 1800 now, so the trend is going down, so we know that uh, if supply gets better, the price goes down. It's not only about gas, it's about energy uh, sources, um, resources, and it's about the price of which is comparable to different uh, prices. We cannot use accumulators instead of uh, power plants, especially in long term. We can talk about 15 minutes and that will be it. There was this project uh, by Musk in Australia that he installed something. Yes, but it works for 15 minutes only. So. This is just for gas generating blocks to start functioning. Let's not be delusional about this. And I'm absolutely convinced that those communities which invest in their energy efficiency and um, they have a lot of generation in their territory, they use solar panels on their roofs, they will have wind, they will have, uh, they will use. Um, biomass and uh, Zofa. You can go to Zofa and see how. Their system works there, and uh, they use biomass, uh, Kamenets, Budilsky, Mirhorod, Lavutic. This is something which is uh, feasible. So you are 
for deregulation, liberalization. Well, yes, yes. Well, deregulation has to be there. I support the market. I think that the market knows all the answers, but if we just pay additionally for gas. I think it, it ruins uh, return. And if for all of these hours we actually were had been investing uh, in energy efficiency instead of just considering it as an option we would have an absolutely different uh, situation we would be facing a different situation and i'm really and well all of those events i don't even want to attend them there are so many energy efficiency conferences uh, over the past four years so you know just name it everyone was holding uh, these events but now it's more about restoration of ukraine and it really scares me a lot in the same way because energy efficiency has achieved no programs and if it will be in the same way as far as restoration of ukraine is concerned well that will be the same result nice conferences lots of smiles but what about money? It's impossible to have investment without money and security is also very important. That is why I ask very specific question. Yes, we can also ask Natalia. What do we have to do? Well, actually, I would have these colleagues as my assistants and I would do everything that they've been talking about. And also, I would like to emphasize that I would stop uh, fossil fuels, uh, subsidies, uh, you should talk about individual systems and gas, you're also a liberal. Well, yes, or subsidies of tariffs uh, in the cities, because in the evening, 200 million were spent on subsidies for the tariff uh, for heat for um, the population. Actually, this money could have been invested into energy efficiency and not to use this money for that purpose this year. So. Rinat Planaro is a private utility, they use rented um, heat uh, facilities and those who can actually afford it, they have to pay the real price. And to make it for this winter, what is important is that what we are doing right now to get ready for this winter, it will stay there because we will use it the next winter and in a couple of years. These are long-term uh, measures which are being taken. If it is possible at this moment to do something, of course that it is a little bit well, late and even now we can do something which are not the long-term at our Eco Club. We are working on a platform on our website. We will have different texts and recommendations, pieces of advice, what can be done. Right now we also have different advice with videos uh, how to check uh, the grid uh, what we can replace what can be done before um, a heating season and when it starts we will also add more information which could be used long term thank you so i think that yes we can talk non-stop about these energy ideas i want to say thank you to all our guests for this discussion we've been talking about us make it through this winter and have to work on our energy uh, sector later. We have Sadoslav Pavluk, Executive Director at Association Energy Efficient Cities of Ukraine, Alexey Pasuk, Deputy Director at um, ECODNGO, Natalia Holdov, an expert at Eco Club uh, NGO, who is responsible for the information campaign aimed at preparing the Ukrainians for the winter, and Andriy Martinuk, Executive Director at Eco Club NGO, and, and this event is supported uh, by the Renaissance Foundations and we are grateful for